r slash ask reddit what conspiracy theory are you certain is true why i am 100 percent convinced my barber is cutting my hair longer and longer each time the city tore up the road in front of his shop months and months ago and are taking their sweet time fixing it i'm convinced he keeps cutting my hair longer since then because this means i need more haircuts more frequently and this makes up for the lost business from the road being torn up you know it's time to bring it up with him when he starts putting hair extensions in. See also, GTA San Andreas. The UFO conspiracy is a government conspiracy. Project Blue Book was a real program in which the US government purposefully made UFO sightings appear to be a government cover up. In actuality the UFO sightings were of the B-2 bomber, F-117 and other experimental aircraft. The military used the UFO sightings to cover up the development of these aircraft. I believe this program never stopped and the government loves the idea of UFO and alien conspiracy because it makes the government appear more powerful while simultaneously misdirecting the public. Edit. For clarification he definitely misspoke when referring to the B-2 and Project Blue Book. It would have been the SR-71 that was being covered up. UFO reports were indeed made when the B-2 was being tested at Area 51. The military didn't actively perpetuate those sightings the same way they did with the Blue Book. Just let them continue. Also, a lot of people are accounting their personal sightings of UFOs that defy physics etc. While some of these I would maintain could still be military aircraft by no means am I saying all UFOs are explainable. I'm talking specifically about the idea that the government has found made contact with aliens and reversed engineered their spacecraft. I would wager that the governments of the world have marginally more knowledge regarding true UFOs than the average citizen. This is also what I believe. In addition, they know a certain segment of the population will hunt out conspiracy theories. The government actively engage these people with exciting, fantastic and sexy stories of alien space wars, alien human hybrids living among us, and secret space programs. These keeps the conspiracy types occupied and out of their hair for real secret programs, which are not fantastical in any way. I remember reading a story, or watching a doku somewhere about this. There was a guy who assertion he had observed UFOs somewhere in the US Southwest. He let someone know, and one day the government showed up, asked him all about it. He told them everything he knew. They confirmed everything he said. He was in fact communicating with aliens and whatnot, and should keep studying them and reporting his findings to them. The truth, the government had been testing helicopters in the night. These are the lights he'd seen and radio signals he heard. They wanted to delegitimize him. Make him look crazy. It worked. No one ever believed him after this. This works for many reasons and is a clever tactic. Game 2 of the 2009 NBA Finals. Paul Pierce pooped his pants and covered it up by faking a knee injury. There's no way he hurt his knee so bad that he needed to be carried off the court. Only to run back on the court minutes later and play like nothing happened. That and there was a noticeable brown spot on his pants before he went down. Edit. This was game 1 of the 2008 finals. I beefed up I'm sorry. He still very well may have pooped himself at some point in 2009. We just have no evidence. The way he was carried off is exactly how I would carry someone who pooped their pants. Two people grab a leg and let the poo pull down in his shorts. Don't want that stuff coming down a leg hole. How did this theory first come about? The US Postal Service is using algorithms to estimate the tracking of packages instead of reliably scanning the packages that have tracking delivery confirmation. Why? Because in the past 3 months I've had packages arrive in my mailbox a week after they said they were delivered. As a seller I've had customers packages with delivery confirmation show as delivered that didn't arrive until days later. This absolutely sucks for consumers who don't get their package but have no course of action because the PO says it has been delivered. This happened to me and I was told by an Amazon employee that sometimes, the delivery drivers will mark the package as delivered, so as not to screw up their route. As somebody who does Amazon Flex a bit, they recently updated the app to fix this. Now if you select a package out of order in the route it will actually go to the next package after that and continue the route, rather than constantly suggesting you try delivering the first one. For example, if you had 5 packages and had an issue with 2, so you selected 3 as the next delivery, 
Previously once 3 was delivered it would have then routed you to 2. Now it routes you to 4. Of course. What you're supposed to do when you have an issue with 2 is report that issue through the app. There's a structure for this shit. But because we're all just random idiots doing it through an app there's not much quality control on who's delivering your packages. No interview process or resume submission or anything. Just a background check to make sure you've never driven drunk or something. I believe Trader Joe's purposely build their parking lots too small so it looks like they're busier than they actually are. Today I learned that Trader Joe's tiny parking lot isn't just a thing where I live. I have lived in multiple states, from the west coast, midwest and to New England, and traveled all across the country. I firmly believe Trader Joe's selects their real estate based on shitty parking situations. Edit thank you for this list of large TJ's parking lots, since I am moving again soon. I will take this information under consideration when deciding where we go next. Colon. Portsmouth. NH Danbury. CT half of New Jersey Virginia Beach. VA Westchester. CA Indio. CA Pasadena. CA Santa Cruz. CA. Reddit is just me and 8 million really cleverly written bots pretending to be people. Plot twist. 8 million redditors cleverly wrote a bot to believe it's a human. And it's you. Calm down Blade Runner. The moon landing. The moon never landed anywhere. It's still in the sky. Just look outside. No. It's just a super thin metal disc held in rotation by satellites. In Mark Ronson and Bruno Mars Uptown Funk. The line Uptown Funk you up. Uptown Funk you up. They actually say duck a few times. Okay so this one time I was at a farmer's market and there was this kid. Definitely under 10 years old playing an electric guitar and singing, which was pretty adorable. But then when he started on Uptown Funk he was definitely saying duck. Not intentionally just how it came out. There was probably a crowd of about 50 people trying not to laugh so as to not make the kid feel embarrassed about performing. But it was one of the funniest things ever. Even the kid's parents were barely holding it together. My son does it the reverse way I'm too hot. Hot day. It still makes sense. Big Mason Jar founded Pinterest to boost sales. They've got their fingerprints all over Etsy too. That Hitler didn't die in that bunker. The bodies found were burned. Well burned. Beyond recognition. Also, the source that everyone cites for this evidence was pretty iffy. Also, turned out the Soviet Union had the bodies for many years. Once they tested DNA it belonged to a woman. Dental records didn't match. He is obviously dead now. But once you read about Hitler's death you come to find there isn't any real evidence the bastard died. Even Stalin believed Hitler escaped. Everyone knows that Hitler was murdered in a cinema in France. Gorlomi. The Turkish coup was an orchestrated attempt at a power grab by Erdogan. Think about it. The military tries to take over the state. While that's going on two jet fighters of the military fly next to Erdogan's plane but refused to engage and flew away. Immediately after the coup Erdogan begins a mass purge of all opposing forces and parties and as multiple government power grabs. My friend said the same thing. That the coup was a false flag. Tanks and armed officers surrender to police squad cars. And right after, Erdogan uses the incident to seize up more power and claims that there would be consequences of such an incident, all of which easily necessitated his measures of preventing subversion of his control by tightening up his authoritarian powers and preventing other Turkish politicians getting elected to the presidency. Yeah right. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened and nobody questions it now. I never even knew it was a conspiracy theory I thought it was fact. D. B. Cooper. The whole flight crew was in on the scam. Nobody jumped out of the plane. He hid somewhere the authorities wouldn't have checked and then strolled out with the money wearing an outfit he had under his clothes. D. B. Cooper took the money and went on to live under the alias Tommy Wiseau. I'm partial to the theory that Ron Paul is D. B. Cooper. The age-adjusted sketch that the FBI released in 2008 looks a lot like Paul. And pictures of Paul from the mid-70s look a lot like the original sketch. Paul's height, 5 feet 11, also matches Cooper's description. In addition, Paul first ran for office in 1974, the year after the hijacking, which would fit if the hijacking was a way of raising money to go into politics. 
I believe the rich are pitting people against each other to drastically take attention away from how they make the rules and run the show. Hard for a white man and black man to come together and fight a common enemy such as the wealthy when their media stations make you hate each other over skin color or other non-important issues for the country. This is exactly what's happening the world over. I'd agree with this one. Back in 2010 during the Occupy movement, the media shit a brick. Every story was either discrediting the whole movement or yelling at people that they have to do everything possible avoid class warfare and it won't solve anything. Now, instead of being angry at the rich, poor people are at each other's throats. Racial tensions are higher than they've been in decades. But you don't hear the media say a peep about avoiding a race war, because they don't care. It's far easier to get away with screwing people over if they're only paying attention to the other people getting screwed rather than the ones doing the screwing. Trump's campaign started off as a joke but as he gained popularity he realized he could actually win. Not a joke as much as a way to get attention. He's been running in every election for a while. He just never made any progress. Basically a voter funded book tour. He always had a new book to sell when election season would get going. When Pope Francis had just started there were some rumors that he would dress as a normal priest at night and volunteer at soup kitchens and whatnot incognito. I like the thought of the Pope getting just a tiny bit too stress adjusting to his new job. I came here expecting to find depressing things that I refuse to believe. Thanks for proving me wrong. Although the Vatican officially denied the allegation, it wouldn't shock me if they did some Arizo for practical security matters than for the purpose of conveying the truth. The claim has never been properly verified, but I personally consider this less of a conspiracy and more of a fun secret. It just seems so appropriate given his public persona, especially when the adoration was overflowing right after his installation. Open bracket. Side note, I'm not sure if installation is the right word. What do you call it when they declare a new pope? Popification? Edit? Pontificating or election were what I was looking for. Thanks for the help. Vladimir Putin planned the Moscow apartment bombings as an excuse to start the second Chechen war, which facilitated his rise to power. I mean they found FSB people near buildings where actual bombs were found in bags, and they said it was a training exercise. Is this still a theory? I honestly thought it was documented fact. Beyonce was not born in 1981. She was born in 1979 and she will be turning 38 not 36 this September. Her dad has been on radio shows and mentioned that Beyonce was the same age as Pink who was born in 1979. Pretending you are two years younger seems like a very petty thing to lie about, but in a strange way I could see it may have been beneficial to her early destiny as child days to portray her as the teen singer who's the face of a girl group, a common trope in the late 90s. Pretending you are two years younger seems like a very petty thing to lie about. I did when I was at university for stupid insecure reasons. I was basically two years older than everyone else. All these home ancestry DNA tests that popped up out of nowhere have me suspicious. Edit. Two words second edit. Sorry. I should actually state my theory. I feel like these suddenly became popular as a way to collect a massive database of DNA. I really wanted to do one of these tests. But the fact that your DNA data is only kept online, you're not given the data as physical media, doesn't sit right with me. We already have the NSA collecting photos, etc. While I'm not going to dismiss the creepy aspects that having people's DNA in databases entails, it's mostly because DNA sequencing technology has gone leaps and bounds the past decade thanks to next gen sequencing. It became a fraction of the price and takes a fraction of the time and someone said, hey, we can so market this. Undergrad bio majors often do their own DNA tests in class. It's that easy. Edit. This comment actually makes me think of one of the Artemis Fowl books. Open bracket. Villian replaces herself in prison with a clone because they use DNA as it in that world. Somehow Pokemon Go knows when I'm smoking weed because every time I smoke and open it, a coughing pops up. It's happened around 8 plus times that I can remember. And coughings are not a Pokemon that's common around me. Edit. I wanted to test out my conspiracy. It's 9 plus times now. We're through the looking glass here. People r slash a boring dystopia the denver international airport is a hub for the illuminati have you seen it 
It's a hub for something creepy, that's for sure. Yep, weird stuff. How it went way over budget by millions, but actually cut corners during construction. The overhead view of the runways resembles a swastika. Lots of construction deep underground without explanation. The long delays before it officially opened, while having an already perfectly functioning airport not far away. David Stern forced Jordan to leave the NBA because of gambling and that is linked to his father's death. I believe this to be true as well. Jordan was a well-known gambler and there was no sense in tarnishing the image of him or the NBA, but so his suspension was guised as a retirement. Unrelated. He's said to be a real donghead. Unrelated. He's said to be a real donghead that seems to be the standard takeaway from an I met Michael Jordan. Celebrity encounter. Grocery stores move shit around all the time to keep you in the store longer. Not the basics like eggs, bread, and milk. The weird stuff like chia seeds, lemon juice, and tartar sauce. This isn't a conspiracy. It's true. Even Costco does it. It's to get you to see more items in the store and is proven to make you spend more. Multiple times I have been on Tinder and seen someone and said to myself, Holy shit. Death swiping right only to be greeted with the you are out of likes screen. I just wait till the morning though. They're still the first ones on there. Seems like it has happened one a too often to me though. They put a person who is frequently right swiped on. At her active. As the one right when you are out of likes to motivate people into buying more. They also front stack people who you matched with when you haven't used it in a while to give you a successful feeling. Making you swipe more. Using up your likes. I doubt I'm the first person to come up with this, but I've long believed that the reason the US always seems to always be involved in some military action is actually because the Pentagon wants to keep our military ready and trained for a more serious conflict. They want to make sure they always have combat experienced, battle-hardened veterans ready for a real war should it break out. That's not why the US gets involved, but it is well known and documented that an armed conflict every 15 years is somewhat necessary to keep soldiers experienced. So you've never heard the term military industrial complex? The USA has been in a wartime economy since World War II. No war, economic collapse. I can't even believe you left out the part where the undertaker threw mankind off a hell in the cell through the Spanish announcers table. Hey. Both WTC towers have asbestos. That needs to be removed. Um. That sounds awfully expensive. Why don't I just coordinate a terrorist attack where four planes are hijacked and two of them hit both towers. One hits the pentagon. And one crashes in a field. Hopefully the towers will completely collapse as well. Yup. That should do it. Now I won't have to pay to remove the asbestos. Instead, I'll just fake a terrorist attack and kill 3,000 Americans. Pockets and women's clothing are designed to be small or non-existent so the fashion industry can sell women purses. The sun is actually the center of the solar system, not the earth. The church doesn't want you to know the truth. I firmly believe, and will never be dissuaded on this, that NBA Commissioner David Stern colluded in 1985 to ensure the New York Knicks would end up with a number one overall pick in the draft, thus ensuring them the services of Patrick Ewing. This is what gave birth to the concept of the frozen envelope theory. Supposedly the envelope containing the name of the New York Knicks was placed in a refrigerator just prior to the draft, and thus allowed Stern to make sure the Knicks, arguably their biggest and most important market, got the top pick in that draft. I love NBA conspiracy theories, even the ones today. Up above there is a comment on how Paul Pierce crapped his pants. I believe it. The reason Easy e died of AIDS is because Suge Knight murdered him. Hired someone to inject AIDS infected blood into his system. Shug even alluded to it on Jimmy Fallon's talk show. So how many deaths is Shug Knight responsible for? Isn't he blamed for both Biggie and Tupac's deaths? He definitely put a hit on Biggie. But Puffy was the one that put a hit on Pac. Biggie was just retaliation. The death of Dr. David Kelly. No way was it suicide and Tony Blair has blood on his hands over it. My dad swears he cured his cancer with weed. He made some kind of oil in the backyard and ate it for a few months and no cancer. No radiation. No chemo. He ate a ton of that stuff. He was high as hell. He calls it Rick Simpson oil. 
He had hairy cell leukemia from Agent Orange that turned into lymphoma after about 15 years. I'm just glad I have my dad. I don't care how or why it worked. Not so much a conspiracy theory, more like a prediction of the future. Anything I do or post on the internet might one day be used against me, especially if I become a more prominent public figure or important person. Someone can and will one day know too much about you. Elite pedophile rings. Example. The Detroit Affair. I made a huge today I learned post about this and it got 33 kerp votes. A retired police officer found Cyril Smith. British MP with 144 accusations of child molestation and abuse. In a home with a sex offender and two drunk teenage boys. He was threatened to be prosecuted under the Official Secrets Act. Nothing happened. Moreover, there were tons of other instances of child abuse that happened in the late 70s or love 80s in Elms House in London because Smith was part of a massive pedophilic network that consisted of MPs and government ministers. Everything they did was covered up and every officer which tried investigating was threatened with the Official Secrets Act. They were even tied to the murder of an Indian boy in the 80s who was completely mutilated. Almost all of the investigation files regarding Sile Smith were destroyed by the Metropolitan Police. In a fact, a dossier of all the members in Parliament and top bankers and government officials was drafted by a Conservative MP, Jeffrey Donchens, which was later lost. Margaret Thatcher later explicitly prevented one of these politicians, Peter Heyman, a top-level British diplomat in this suspected ring from being investigated, even though a 33-page document by the Director of Public Prosecutions showed he had pedophilic material, when David Cameron back in 2014 paneled a board to investigate it, the first two heads of the board were fired, they officially resigned, and then the third one was rehired because they had to disband the panel to make another one. Insane. This ring didn't just die in the 80s in Britain, it still exists today. Multiple cartels are operating in the US, and they are a big part of why the average working person is struggling so much there. By cartel, I don't mean a drug smuggling group. I'm talking about a group of legal businesses and corporations who work together to keep prices high and costs low while pretending to compete with one another. Cases in point, telecom providers. It's well known that there's a literal agreement between Time Winner and Comcast that they won't compete with one another. That each is their sphere of interest and they won't move into the other sphere. This has the effect of stifling infrastructure investment and keeping prices high. Healthcare costs are another cartel situation. Voter suppression efforts by the Republican Party. There's no real problem with in-person voter fraud in the US. There's maybe a dozen cases of it. Out of millions of people. But Republicans are pretending there is a problem so that they can suppress their opponents voting rights. I don't know if I believe it's entirely true, but I feel like there may be some truth to the conspiracy that says Elvis befriended President Nixon to get the government to help him fake his death so he could live out the rest of his life as a not famous person. It's at least somewhat plausible. But who is going to fake their death as? He died on the toilet pushing too hard. Question mark? When you're lying, throw in a bit of self embarrassing info, makes it more believable. That the McCanns were actively involved with the disappearance and or death of their daughter Madeline. That op is conspiring to make me read all these posts and believe the 9-11 and JFK theories. Khloe Kardashian's actual father is OJ Simpson and nothing is going to convince me otherwise. The chemicals in the water turning the friggin frogs gay. Simulated reality. Spiders have 8 eyes because they are actually self. Replicating webcams that locate and move to corners where using silk wires they build a structure which they can use to trap small animals for food and also as an antenna they can use like a string instrument to send data to their network. That's just science right there. Elliot Smith didn't kill himself. Yeah he sang sad songs. But he was recording a new album and had just invited a new producer to help him work on it. And no one stabs Themself in the chest. Twice. IDK who did it. But it he didn't do it himself. Not saying you're wrong, but lots of people stab themselves multiple times during a suicide attempt. They're called hesitation wounds. For example, Artie Land stabbed himself nine times with a chef's knife and fortunately survived. Again, not saying anything about ES. Darth Jar Jar. Whoa, 
You made it to the end, you're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.